All right, so let's talk a little more in depth about the CFAN uh, model and how it can optimize your healing. Today, I really want to focus on your uh, cell health. And what does cell health really mean? Just in summary, we've talked a lot about, yes, you can go right to trying to get the body to heal, injecting PRP, prolotherapy stem cells. But if you don't optimize the rest of the uh, body's healing ability, you aren't going to get the results you want out of your patients. So let's talk a little bit about cell health. Uh, the first really important thing with cell health is optimizing your patient's nutrition. Um, Nutrition is vital. You have healthy fats, healthy proteins, healthy carbohydrates. These are fuels for the body to heal and repair. We practice something that's called Rejuve for Life. So all of our regenerative patients coming in to see us, they all go on what's called a Rejuve for Life. What it is, it's a like glycemic index-based diet. I don't even call it a diet. It's more of a way of life where they are eating uh, healthy nuts, healthy fruits, healthy proteins, meats, and healthy fats. Um, it's kind of like paleo, except this one's based on the glycemic index. The higher the glycemic index, the faster that carbohydrate is going to be broken down, and the faster that's going to spike their insulin. Insulin spikes lead to fat storage. Also, insulin spikes also block your growth hormone. So you want to eat healthy, low glycemic index foods to maximize your healing, maximize your growth hormone, maximize testosterone, and help to shed the fat and get that lean muscle higher. So nutrition is very important. Um, the other thing you want to think about too is, is exercise in general. When you think about exercise and the science behind exercise, exercise helps with almost every chronic disease from arthritis to back pain, cancer, of course diabetes, high cholesterol. Exercise is pivotal to your uh, body's heal healing ability. Uh, with all of our uh, clients, we really recommend one, the nutrition, but two, the exercise to balance out that. That's part of the, the functional movement as well. When people are moving, they're stronger, they're more limber. The stronger their body is, the more it's gonna support the back, the spine, or those joints to decrease the forces going through those. So muscle is very important. So that's part of the cell health as well. The other thing we focus on with all of our clients, especially if they're coming in over age 40 to 45 or females over 50, is we want to know what's happening with their hormones. So hormones can be a lot of different things, but we know if hormones are out of balance, the body's going to age faster. You're going to get uh, softer bones, osteoporosis, all those things are very important. So we look at different things, male versus female. Uh, for example, a 45 to 55 year old male coming in, he came in to get his knees done, but he's very fatigued, he's got low energy. One of the things we might check, we might check his uh, testosterone level. We might do a free and a total testosterone. We might I look at his DHEA as well. The DHEA can lead into testosterone. It also can help the body make cortisol, a natural anti-inflammatory. So you'll check his uh, growth hormone op and different things like that to help maximize his, uh, his healing. If they're low, there's different things you can do. If they're old enough and they actually aren't making testosterone on their own, you can do testosterone replacement. There's different options for that. Or there's other things you can give to try to increase their body or his testicles production of his own testosterone. There's different supplements, different things you can do to, to help with that as well. And the female side gets a little bit more complex. Uh, especially after menopause, a woman usually is going to stop, her ovaries will stop uh, producing hormones, and mostly she'll stop producing her progesterone. Her body can still make some estrogens through her fat tissue and her adrenal glands, so she usually will be something that's called estrogen dominant. When someone's estrogen dominant, they have a lot of trouble losing weight, they might be more irritable, they might not be sleeping very well. So it's important to have your patients either see you or a nurse practitioner or somebody who you've trained to look at their hormone levels that can then help to optimize their healing as well and balance out those things. It's not just for their healing, but it's for their sleep, it's for their bone density, um, also for mental clarity, thinking, and, and, and stuff as well. So it's important to maximize those in females. Uh, the other thing you might look at is, is adrenal glands. We'll talk a bit more about adrenals too with stress, but the adrenal glands are very important because the adrenals are little glands that sit on top of the kidneys. Their primary job is to make cortisol. So what is cortisol? Cortisol sounds like cortisone, right? It is. It's, it's an anti-inflammatory medication. It uh, should be very high in the morning and it should slowly decrease towards the evening. So when you wake up, you should have energy, you should have zest. You shouldn't be all achy and stiff and sore. Your body makes cortisol to help you wake up and have energy, but also to suppress abnormal inflammation in the body. A lot of chronic pain patients will have low and suppressed cortisol levels, one from the stress of all the chronic pain. Over time, their adrenals kind of get burnt out. They aren't making enough cortisol, which leads to a higher pain pattern and you, you got to break that cycle. So looking at cortisol, either via saliva or blood, is an important part that hormone process to really see what else is going on. Finally, you might want to look at the micronutrient levels in your patients, things like vitamin D, looking at amino acid levels or fatty acid levels. All those things are critical for the body to heal and repair. The last thing I want to touch on is stress. Uh, if the body is stressed, if your patients are stressed, if you're stressed, you're not going to heal well. Cortisol is going to be too high, too low. Uh, you're going to have decreased energy. You're going to lose that zest. So you really have to control your stress, and that starts with sleeping. If you aren't getting at least eight hours of sleep a night, the body needs sleep to help the body heal, to repair. That's when the body releases growth hormone, testosterone, other, other hormones to help repair the body. And uh, that's critical, especially when you're recovering from a regenerative-type procedure. 
Um, one of the last things you want to look at too is you know giving your, your, your patients and yourself some white space. White space is a time we have nothing planned, you don't have anything to do, you can just let your body relax and you can uh, be creative and, and, and just really get that stress out of your body. The last thing is you know focusing on either prayer or meditation, yoga, tai chi, something to clear the mind and help your body focus again. So this is a little bit about the cell health and the CFAN model. When you start to put these things into your, pra your practice and you optimize these things with your patients, one, their outcomes are going to be better, but two, they're going to lean up, they're going to have more energy, and they're really going to start enjoying life again.